At what point does nature compel man to leave the nest and seek his own path, forage for his own supplies and build his own kingdom? Perhaps the answers lie in nature. Alright, so welcome to the weekend, everyone. Looks like our avian friends are out here getting fed today, so I thought I would uh, see if I could capture a little bit of footage of these guys uh, taking down some worms. They seem to be uh, pretty active right now, so I thought I'd see if I could give you guys a chance to check that out. So coming up later on today, we're going to be doing a quick blab test to ensure that the system works properly for the full blab episode coming up later on in the month. And we're going to be talking a little bit about connection and, well, more specifically, the connection between men. So again, this can be a somewhat uncomfortable topic, especially for men, so I guess I'm trying to get myself somewhat psyched up here. So I thought it'd be nice to come out and maybe just take a little bit of relaxing footage of these birds before they have a chance to fly from the nest, as I think this is kind of a metaphor for where a lot of us can find ourselves stuck, especially in the millennial generation. Now, I'm apparently a part of that now because they're classifying it as anyone basically younger than 32, and I know a lot of people can feel somewhat trapped in the nest, and I know I did for quite some time, so let's see if we can uh, pause this until Mom comes back with a worm. All right, and here we go. Mom is back, and she looks like she's brought some lunch for these guys. Now, uh, I find this to be a rather interesting metaphor for the way a lot of us tend to grow up, having everything sort of spoon-fed to us. Now, there comes a point, that point is not really clearly defined in Western society, at which point people have to leave the nest and stop expecting to be fed on their own. So I think for a lot of us here in the modern age, the, I guess, delaying of adolescence and perpetuating of this kind of behavior where people are expecting to have things sort of spoon-fed to them, brought to them, done for them, is really interfering with our ability to find our own mission. And if a man doesn't have a mission and a purpose, well, a man will be listless, floating without a rudder, so to speak. So, let's move this down to the studio, because I'm really not sure how much more battery I got left in this guy. So what is it that might be interfering with a man's ability to find his own mission today? Now, in my opinion, there are certainly many factors that affect our ability to find our purpose in today's modern age. With the sheer volume of opportunity that exists now, I guess our paths are a lot less railroaded than they may have been in the past where our family or our group would have had a very, very specific role to fill, and you weren't exactly spoiled for choice. And today we always have to struggle with the contradiction that we have tons and tons of opportunity, but what feels like very few options. What incentive is there to emerge from adolescence if you don't really see any palpable future ahead of you? I've certainly had plenty of my own struggles with many of these questions, foremost among which right now happens to be what exactly is it that I'm going to contribute to the world before I die. Now, I am fortunate enough to not have any sort of terminal illnesses or anything like that, but I do have to be realistic about the fact that my life is probably about one-third over. So while 2015 was mostly about just getting into the YouTube space and making as many mistakes as possible as early as possible, and 2016 is going to be primarily about focusing on this idea of growth in order to hone my sense of mastery to be able to produce as much value as possible. And as always, guys, I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below, so leave me a comment about what kind of value it is that you'd like to produce in your lifetime.